God, come on through, Cookie. I want to pull my soapbox, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is going to be my review for If Loving You Is Wrong, Season 4, Episode 9. There's a whole lot of stuff that actually went on, so let's just get right to it. Okay, when we come in, Brad is coming to the door. Randall was over actually seeing the baby for the first time and basically talking shit to Alex. And Alex is gotten to the point where she's just evil, she crazy, and she basically feels like she has no other choice but to kill that motherfucking Randall. And, hey, it is what it is. If he gotta go, he gotta go. So Brad and her ended up, you know, they threw him out. Them two end up having an exchange. He's like, every time I, I try to come and make things better or make things right, You've done something else. You over up in here and everything just is all good, you know? And she's like, no, it really isn't. But I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of arguing. I ain't apologizing no more. Her attitude is still funky like she didn't do something wrong. He told her, you know, you're not, she told him rather, you're not happy unless you're punishing me. Well, keep your motherfucking mouth and your goddamn legs closed. But whatever. All of that shit went to the wayside. Um... She basically told him, you know, we'll fight it out in court. It is what it is. But I ain't fucking playing your games anymore. And uh, that was that. So he left there. He went on back over there with Marcy. Him and Marcy go back and forth. They have their exchange. She's like, hey, look, I tried, whatever. Marcy's still going on with this. She wants him to move out kind of thing. And he's like, you know what? If you really want me to go, I'll go ahead and I'll go. And she, he said, just tell me you don't want me. And I'll go. She said, I don't want you, but no, I don't really mean it. I really do want you. I crave you. And I don't want to because if it will feel as though it's wrong. It's like they pushed us together and we can't let them have that kind of power. Child, fuck that shit. They need to go on and be together and be happy and be done with it. But whatever. I mean, I understand, but mm -mm, they done made y'all too miserable. Y'all deserve to be happy, and they need to just go on and get on with it. Whatever. In the midst of all of this, um, meantime, between time, Lucian has proposed to Natalie, and they actually talked about moving into the house earlier, so they want to uh, propose that they rent from, they rent the house from Ramsey until they can get the closing and all of that done. It's going to take about 30 to 45 days. So they did all that, but she accepted and all of that. Whenever Lucian has spoken to uh, spoke to Kelly about that whole little situation, he basically gave her some advice about Ramsey and told her, stop always assuming things. Stop crying about it. Stop, you know, stop asking all the wrong questions. Go on and ask real questions. You'll get real answers and probably you will find out, you know, what you really need to know, which is true. So that was that. Then we had a whole little section where Travis had his ass out on Kelly's porch. And he's accusing her of, of leading him on and playing games with him and this, that thing, and the other. She was talking shit to him. Told him, no, remember, you the one that dumped me. You're the one that played games. You know, this thing, that thing, and the other. And then she basically dismissed him and told him to get his ass on. And he politely choked her the fuck out. Choked her ass out right there on the porch and told her, you don't know me, bitch, I will do you. And I'm going to do you. You don't play no games with me, bitch, I'm mad now. He got a lot of damn nerve. Okay, in the midst of that, we got Randall. He done ran his ass up on Marcy and got Marcy all hemmed up in a house she was supposed to be showing. He done created a fake um, appointment. He all up in her face, talking shit to her, telling her how he's going to take her down. He has a begun to make her life miserable, all because she slept with Brad. And I'm like, do you have all the nerve in the world? And she's like, yeah, you slept with that whore and then got her pregnant. He talked shit to her. Told her all about how she couldn't have babies and this, that thing. Oh, real nasty and real mean. I said, girl, you need to take a 
a lesson from Alex and cut a hot one on him because he's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So these people are crazy. A lot of crazies. The men in this, this little program was a little off, funny. Okay, so over on the other side, we got that the goddamn Julius. Julius, his dad's right-hand man, ended up snatching Julius up. And tell him, yeah, you tried to kill him, this, that thing, and the other. Now you done fucked up, and it's been an automatic thing. He done died. Julius didn't even know he died. He died. But that wasn't what killed him. He died afterwards. But he changed everything and made a video, and you need to get on down to the lawyer's office. So he went on down there, child. And the real real will reading was a mess. Tilda was there, and the wife was there. He had this video, and I'm kind of laughing because... He's doing his video. The man was already on oxygen. He already couldn't hardly talk or anything like that. Yet, he had full voice to be able to do this video. I said, Tyler, really? Come on, Tyler. But okay, whatever. We're going to roll with it. Long story short, he gave the house and $25 million to Tilda and then left all the rest of his fortune to Tilda's daughter that he and her have together. He gave Julius nothing at all call and then told the wife she was the most vindictive bitch that he had ever met and said that she's basically the reason that julius is the way that he is and he wouldn't be surprised if she's the motherfucker that actually put him up to putting that pillow over his face that she probably put him up to it and told her yeah and i seen you putting that pillow over my face you are getting nothing absolutely nothing i left it to my daughter i said okay we find out in the midst of everything, the daughter is Claudia. Down there at the office, Claudia still being harassed by Esperanza with her funky ass. She didn't got on my nerves. I want her to get hit by a bus or something. She's ridiculous. She's still trying to find out. They didn't get word back to her. Her reference is all cleared and, and checked out. She's still going at it. Eddie overhears it. So Eddie starts trying to run a background on Claudia. Julius, not Julius, I'm sorry, Lucian made a phone call. Let them know, let them know, because they're all undercover. Let them know, you know, they're digging into her past. Is that, you know, he had taken care of it. They're down in the break room. She, he pulls uh, Claudia and tells her, you know, this is what's going on. They were trying to background check you and everything like that, but I got you. I hooked you up. I got your back. She hugged him. In the midst of them hugging, and walks Esperanza. Now, she gonna yell at her, send her back to work, and then gonna get to talk of shit to Lucian telling him, you know, you were kissing her. I'm like, what nobody even kissing Esperanza, you old twisted up whore with your nebby ass who works for 911 who ain't never on the motherfucking phone, bitch. She's ridiculous. So she had threatened Lucian about telling Natalie and this, that, and the other. I'm like, why don't you get your own motherfucking business together, bitch? You probably run around got herpes. That motherfucking Eddie's always dragging whores up in your goddamn bed and on your couch and shit. You don't know what you're sitting on. But you're so busy in somebody else's motherfucking business. Nebby bitch. She remind me of that old nebby ass woman that live across the street from Candace on uh, the Have and Have Nots. Fucking nebby bitch. But anyway, so that's, you know, she's going to tell him, I'm going to be watching you. Well, who's going to be watching you, bitch? Anyway, she had me hot. But um, anyway, that's basically what all that went on. It was a good episode. Really, really good. The last thing we saw, Julius ran up in there on the lawyer, stabbed him in his hands, and got the information about who Claudia was and where she worked at. So this fool actually has the information um, that she, her name is Claudia. She works down at the police station. So there's going to be some shit with that. But I think Julius is going to get exactly what he go. He looking for. He go down there fucking with Claudia. I really believe that. But anyway, that's it, y'all. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You know how all that works out. And I will talk to you guys next Tuesday. Bye, guys.